Uh, first of all, Gus, how long have you lived here? Nine years. Nine years, okay. Yep. And so based on the conversations that you and I have had before, uh, you felt like this has been an issue uh, probably since before you got here. It has been. Oscar Conway has complained about it to the RCMD and the government, and uh, absolutely nothing has been done. Okay, so tell me in your own words, what, what's going on here? What's the big concern? The big concern is the high amount of traffic there and the speeds that they're traveling. Like this is a 60 kilometer zone. People coming out of Sussex, heading home at say lunch hour or supper time, it's easier for them to make one left-hand turn down here at the bottom of McGregor Brook Road and Roachville Road rather than take the three right-hand turns and they end up out here on number 10 highway where they can travel as fast as they want. But they take this as a shortcut. This is a 60 kilometer zone. Very seldom anybody drives the speed limit or under coming up here. It's always faster. Now you can ask any of the neighbors, some of the neighbors, I have seen cars go by here that you couldn't even get a license plate number off if they're traveling that fast here. Hey? Oscar Conway can tell you the same thing over there. It, it is totally ridiculous the number of uh, vehicles that travel this road at like, you know, supper time, going down this road first thing in the morning. I cannot understand why anybody travels down Roachville Road to go into Sussex because you have to go to the bottom of the hill at a stop sign, turn right and go over where if you stayed on number 10 highway and went down there, you just take the ramp and go into Sussex, eh? Same way with big trucks. I've had problems here, called trucking companies and told them to keep their trucks off the road. Number 10 highway takes you to the same place, but most trucks now, people travel by GPS. They don't know how to travel, they don't know how to get around, so they follow GPS. GPS tells them that Roachville Road is shorter than number 10. It is short, it's shorter probably by 200 feet, and that's it but the GPS sends them down here. Now, a lot of the truck companies that I called about this have taken, make sure that their trucks don't, go out, don't come down this road and they take number 10. What we need on this road, simple, cheap solution, and I have been telling them this since 2012. Put a speed bump in here, reduce the speed limit to 50, and put a sign down at the bottom of the hill no true traffic. Now, I had an engineer, Diane Nash, who's an engineer with the Department of Transportation. I suggested this to her, and what she told me about no true traffic, she said, you can't block the road off. Now, she's an engineer with the government. Didn't know the difference between no true traffic and a dead end road. So that's the kind of people that I, I've been dealing with over the years. I have, I'm probably going to say that easily, if I copied them all out, I've got 50 to 75 emails, plus probably a couple of hundred phone calls. They can go to my phone, history on my phone, shows the telephone calls. And you know what has been done? After, well, yes, they did do something. They put a stop sign out here at the end of the road where it was a yield. Nobody stops at that stop sign. And I think people have told me, I said five times, and they said it's probably more like 10 times, They've run over that stop sign. So when they come up here to repair it, there's at least three guys and two trucks. So probably at a cost of a couple of thousand dollars a shot through it. Where they could have put a speed bump and a no true traffic sign, very cheap. End the, end the problem, solve the solution. The first time they hit the speed bumps, they won't come back. They'll travel on number 10 road. So, I mean, like I, I in the phone conversations that you and I had, and even here right now, I, I can yeah. hear the frustration yeah. in your voice. Yeah. Uh, you've been dealing with this, as you said, since yeah. you've been here for nine years. So, yeah. so tell me how frustrating it's been to to keep sort of uh, you know keep going down grab. this road, no pun yeah. intended, and, yeah. and not being able in your in your mind to get any results. Well, it's a good thing that I got some control. I'm not a violent man. Hey, I ne one thing about me is I'll never start a fight. I might end a lot of them, but I will never start them. Hey. You know what I mean? It is totally frustrating. How many people I have talked to, and all they do is say, "Oh, this is not my, uh, this is not my expertise." Pass you on to that person, and pass you on to that person. Lots of the time, I end up talking to the same person I talked to the first time. I have called Gary Moore. He's uh, New Brunswick Safety. I have Carol, Carol Urquhart, 
Bill Oliver's the Minister of Transportation Infrastructure. Never even get a return call, return email, nothing from these people. They are hired employees of the taxpayers. We pay their salary, but they seem to think that they can call the shots and do what they want. Now, if a politician lived on this road, it would be paved to beat hell, and it would be reduced, and our RCMP would be up here patrolling it for these politicians. I can't even get the can't even get the RCMP up here. You can ask any of the neighbors; they very seldom ever see an RCMP. I've suggested to come up here with a unmarked car, park it someplace. No sense to having a cruiser up here with all the colors and lights on it. Hey, who's who's going to travel too fast then? But see, common sense does not prevail with these people. They haven't got a clue, and they couldn't care less about the people up here. Couldn't care less about the kids that live across the road. But if one of those children gets run over by a car, you'll see all kinds of politicians, government people, and RCMP up here getting photo ops. Um, I, I want to talk about the, the safety aspect in a yep. second, but uh, just to sort of clarify as well, it, like, are you considered to be a Sussex resident? Yes, I am. So, so your address is Sussex? Well, well, yes. This is called Roachville, but I mean, I am Sussex area, yes. Okay, but, but you're in a bit of a sweet spot where you don't fall under the municipal no. jurisdiction, so no. it's not, the, not, no. not like the municipality can no. come that's and right. do something themselves. No. So that's got to be equally frustrating, Yes, too. it has, yes. I mean, they even put a speed bump down on St. George Street. Had the same problem down there with people speeding and I mean there's humpteen kids down in there on that street. They put a speed bump in there. That's a 50 kilometer zone down St. George Street. They put a nice big wide speed bump so it's not sharp, it's not hard on your vehicle down in there. Why can't they do the same up here? This really is not a road. This is really a street through a subdivision. You can see this. There's houses on each side here and it is totally unacceptable. Totally uh, I don't know. I don't know what I know what I would call politicians, but I won't say it on the air, eh? You know what I mean? Totally unacceptable. Uh, Bruce Northrup has done a great job. He's a good MLA. Has done what he can, but he can only suggest it. He can't make the final decision about what they have to do, eh? They need to get up here. Look at this road. I mean, if you travel down, most of the neighbors in this subdivision here, the condition of this road here. They won't even travel down over the hill. They'll drive up here and go down number 10 because it, over, down over that hill, that's not fit for nothing. It's narrow and they, there's so much truck traffic on here and so many speeders on here that they won't even travel down there for safety reasons. It, it must be almost scary for people to drive it is. in that way, yeah. especially with the truck traffic yeah. that you're talking yeah. about. It's gotten so bad since I come here now. There used to be a couple of senior ladies used to walk up here on the road and they wouldn't even walk on the road here anymore because of the traffic traffic and the speeders. There was no shoulder on the road here practically and uh, you, you know it's it's just not safe. It's unacceptable. There should have been something done when I first got on this. I made the suggestion. Speed bumps, no true traffic sign. Simple solution. Inexpensive would have solved the problem but no it's not their idea. And I was nice to politicians and government people when I first started this. I'm not now. I got Stacks of sarcastic emails at Impulse, being unqualified, incompetent. Uh, oh, I don't know, there's a thousand words you could use. I could be like a politician, use these big fancy words and mean nothing and do nothing. So, which is what they're good at. So, do you feel like then that it's only a matter of time before someone gets, yep. gets seriously injured or, or killed along it, here if, if it, it continues is. this way? And when the government people and the RCMP show up here, when somebody gets seriously hurt, if I'm home, I will blow a gasket. Now there will be something, everything will just go sideways because I'm not afraid of anybody and I will speak out and I will do what is necessary. Uh, you mentioned before we came on camera, you've got a neighbor here just beside yep. you who, who's afraid to cross the road to get his own mail. Yeah, he's, his daughter and his granddaughter stops in, picks up his paper and his mail from him. He's 90 years old. And uh, it's the same, you know. This is not about me. I couldn't care less. I'm in good health. Okay? I go to my mailbox. I don't. I don't. I don't walk on Roachville Road. I go down. I drive down. Walk on the trail that's down in Sussex. Because, like I said, it's not safe to walk on the road here. There's no shoulders on the road, and the speeders here. It is unbelievable. If you were here at 4:30 in the evening, 
or say 7.30 in the morning, whenever time people go back and forth to work, in the morning the traffic is going this way, and in the evening the traffic is coming up. And, and they, they are speed. You ask Oscar Conway, like you know, there's times here, there's cars go by here, you couldn't even have time to copy down the license plate. Um, you had mentioned as well that you had started a petition back yep. seven years ago? Yes, because of the school bus stop was there on top of the hill, and the traffic was so bad, we got after the government. The bus stop used to be right here on Wildwood Crescent, right here. For some reason or other, they moved it down to the top of the hill. So we, we got after them to move it back up here. Well, of course, being the government, and they're going to call the shots, they get them to stop at both places. They still didn't take the bus stop away from the top of the hill. Now, Ernie Keith had a mailbox right there on top of the hill. He lives right there where the school bus stop was, okay? They took Ernie Keith's mailbox out of there because it's too dangerous for the mail mailman to stop there and deliver mail, but it's not too dangerous for the school bus to stop and pick up kids, eh? So, you know, common sense flies out the window with these politicians. The only thing politicians, and I'm excluding Bruce because Bruce is a good guy, the only thing politicians are good for are ribbon cutters and luncheon experts. And that's all they are. They, uh, and like I said, they will feed their buddies. If their buddies, construction company lived here, uh, the owner lived here on this road, and of course if they were given the politicians golf bags and golf club sets to go golfing and probably paving their driveway for them, they'd be up here doing wonders for them. Backflips just to get, get keep them happy. But the average taxpayer couldn't care less. Okay, so uh, you mentioned it a couple of times already, but I want you to, yep. to, to sort of clarify it one more time. What What's your solution in your mind? What's the best thing that the province could do to, to resolve this issue for your neighborhood? Go down at the bottom of the hill down here, put a no true traffic sign. Especially if not a no true traffic sign, put no true trucking. They have that sign down on Riverside Drive. That's the old highway going towards Appahawk. No true truck traffic, okay? Reduce the speed limit to 50 and put in a speed bump down there at the top of the hill and put in a speed bump over here. Simple solution, cheap, simple solution. We're not asking for much. We're asking to keep the residents, the taxpayers here in this community safe. And what do you think those changes would do? Those changes, well, 50 kilometers, you gotta slow down. A speed bump will certainly slow them down. Uh, and no true traffic, no true truck traffic at least would keep the truck traffic out there because, like I said, truck driver. Uh, last week I had three Sunbury chip trailers, B trains. I don't know if you know what they are. Mm -hmm. B trains come up to here. They were foreign, and you know why they ended up here? They are foreign truck drivers that was on these trucks for Sunbury. They don't know how to read the English signs. So they follow a GPS and they ended up here. They come from the Sussex sawmill over here with uh, heading towards Chipman. And when they when they come up the ramp, I don't know what the exit number is there because I live here, so it don't make any difference. I don't, you know, you don't pay attention at all. But it's down by the fair. When they leave the Sussex Irving sawmill and they head for Chipman, they take the first exit. That exit, you come up to the intersection there. Ahead of you, there's a sign there half the size of the end of my house. It says number 10 highway. Can't miss it if you know how to read English. Okay? But their GPS tells them the shortest route, which is to turn right, go over the Roachville Road and turn left, and then come up this road. This is this is this is the problem that would deal. I thought that when you come to Canada. And in order to have a, especially a class one driver's license, you are supposed to be able to read English science. And in fact, I'm going to call Carl Urquhart and uh, Gary Moore, which is the Department of Safety for New Brunswick, and find out if this is the fact. And, if the, and I know lots of truckers. I trucked all my life, traveled all over Canada and the US. Truck drivers here all know me because they're all trying to get me sometimes to drive spare, but I'm retired and I'm not going driving no more. Anyways, and I hear stories from them fellas, 
about these drivers. They said that the majority of them do not know how to read English signs, and that's why they followed the GPS, and that's exactly what they were. I called Sunbury and told him, I said, you get your trucks off this road. They're not supposed to be here. And I said, the next time they come up here, I'm going to pull my truck across the road, and I'm going to block the road. And I said, a set of B trains not going to be able to turn around here. And then I'll call the police. Solve the problem. So apparently he must have talked to him because I haven't seen him here since. All right, we'll stop it there. Okay. <clears throat> okay, Bruce. Um, so take me back. When when were you first made aware of, of the concerns of, of Gus and the others in this neighborhood? Well, it was many, many years ago when uh, we started emails and calls from this area. And uh, during that time that all these emails had, uh, were, were advanced to the Department of Transportation and uh, and also public safety too. Those two departments should uh, be involved in this situation and uh, I've made my uh, views uh, known that it is a dangerous area here. It's a dangerous stretch of road and uh, my biggest thing at the end of the day is somebody getting seriously injured or, or, or killed on this uh, road and I made that very very clear. I'll confess I'm not an engineer and, and uh, I need engineers to tell me what they would suggest and uh, our suggestion here would be speed bumps even a flashing uh, sign saying how fast you are coming here and uh, the number 10 highway which is right next door is, is a good highway and that's the way that people should be traveling and not through uh, through this neighborhood. So uh, just to, to go back for a second you, you said your view is that it is kind of dangerous I want you to expand on that a little bit. Well, uh, just standing here today, we've seen uh, cars going by here that aren't uh, within the, the speed limit, and that's only the last 15, 20 minutes. The people that live here see this 24 hours a day, seven days a week of people coming through here and, and uh, early in the morning or, or late at night when people get off work, and this is not a, a, a through road, and the signs, which is not a very big expense, just to say that this is not a through road, and to have a police presence here to uh, give tickets out. And I think once tickets are given out that people will get the message and uh, I applaud Gus and I applaud the people around this area for uh, getting this out into the public and I'm hoping that this will help uh, DTI and public safety be able to come to a solution uh, sooner than sooner than later. Do you think Gus and, and Oscar and, and the others in this neighborhood, do you think they're on the right track with the idea of a couple of speed bumps strategically located and, and maybe a sign saying no through truck traffic, that kind of thing? Well, like I say, I'm not an engineer, uh, 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 but that is definitely the, the answer, I think, to, uh, to have it here, uh, speed bumps and reduce the, the speed here. Uh, have a sign down in the bottom of the hill saying no traffic and uh, just let the people that, that live in this area use this road. Uh, like I say, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm scared to death that somebody will die or somebody will get uh, severely injured because it's uh, of a well-traveled road and it doesn't have to be a well-traveled road when you got an excellent road right next to you. Now, Gus says he's been living here for nine years. I understand that the Conservatives were not the party in power, um, you know, the entire nine-year stretch. Um, but that seems like an awfully long time to, to come up with what, uh, as Gus described, seems like a, a, an easy, a fairly simple solution, uh, uh, you know, some quick work, some quick observation along the road here right. um, can, can probably, uh, you know, give give DTI and give other uh, engineers and government officials the, the type of, of, of info that they, you would think they would need uh, in order to make the adjustments that, uh, that, you know, that this neighborhood feels is necessary. So uh, why, do you have any idea why this would be taking as long as it has been to, to, to get addressed? I don't have a 100% answer to that. Uh, all the information has been sent to them and, and uh, not only by the people in this area but through my office too and not only to DTI but through the Department of Public Safety also. And uh, We've been pushing and I've been pushing and, and our office has been pushing to get uh, engineers up here to come, a, to come to a solution. So I'm helping, I'm hoping that today will uh, help get something done for this area because if people want this of this area deserve an answer and it's been going on like you said for many many years and it's gone on for too long. Uh, it just needs to be fixed. Um, uh, you've mentioned a couple times here that you're not an engineer and I get that but what do you think it would take? What, what type of uh, 
study or observation? Would it be like, uh, you know, the cables laying across the road for, for like a traffic pattern study, that kind of thing? What do you think it would take to to, to, to get something moving in this? Well, spot? that would be a start to uh, get a traffic study done, but I'm not a big fan of, uh, of studies because they, they get done and then sometimes they sit on the shelf for many, many months. Uh, this is pretty uh, uh, simple. I call it a keep it simple. And uh, this is a pretty simple solution that we need the engineers here from the Department of uh, uh, Transportation and from Public Safety to work together to come to up with a solution at the end of the day to uh, make sure that this road here, its uh, speed limit is reduced and speed bumps are here and a flashing light and whatever we have to do to make sure that uh, at the end of the day that people are safe. So you're making that commitment to Gus then that, uh, that you're going to renew those requests and make sure that that, uh, that this file is on, on the top of the pile on, on the appropriate desks? I've, I've renewed that uh, ask last weekend. I was talking to the Minister of Transportation last weekend and he is in contact with, uh, with the Minister of Public Safety last weekend. I haven't heard back from them, but I expect to hear back from them very, very soon. They wanted to get an update from, uh, from their staff and I'm sure that's happening this week and I expect very, very soon that they'll have a recommendation for this area. How confident are you that it can get done and, and not take a, another nine years or longer to, to do? Well, it's it's one of the things I want to see get done before I'm done by the end of October. And I'm going to do everything I can in the next three months to make sure this gets done. And uh, I have uh, complete faith that, that, that it will get done. So, uh, Oscar, you've got your, your business up the road here. Yes. And you live across the road from it. Yeah, we live down the other street. That's my office across the road. Oh, it's the office across the road. Okay, so, yeah. um, but you're you're in that neighborhood anyway. How long have you yeah. lived in the neighborhood and worked in the neighborhood? Uh, 39 years. 39 years. So yeah. 1981. So you know every inch of this road, inside out, upside down, and backwards, and all that stuff. Pretty much, yeah. So, in your mind, what's what's the big challenge here? What's the big issue? The big issue is well, traffic. We 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 got way more traffic than we should have. And uh, uh, the biggest thing is getting on to Route 10. Uh, the people have to go around, and uh, they think going up this way is shorter, and they're just used to traveling this way, I guess. But I'd like to see a, you loop. The cure, I think, is to loop onto Route 10 right here, because when they was building, when they was doing the construction. This road over here was put in temporary, it worked perfect. The traffic from over here, they went out on Route 10, and, and we, was, we was good. We didn't have no traffic up over the hill. So, uh, so what are you seeing then when you say there's too much traffic? What's, what, what are you seeing uh, at your business and near your home? Well, I, there, you know, like safety for the people around, the kids, you know, we've had uh, we got the school bus stop up there, which we did, which we moved. Uh, they moved that a few years, so it was down farther out the road so they could see better. It was across from my shop. Was the traffic would come over the hill, and it was right there. So we changed that. That got changed, which was great. It's down below now. But it, it, uh, that's, the, uh, uh, that's the biggest thing. So if we can get the... Like I have a shop there, and there's trucks backing out and going in, and there's more traffic around there, around my business, of course. And, uh, it would just be nice if we had less volume, that's for sure. And slowed down, you know, we get it slowed down. And uh, uh, lowering the speed limit, I think down to 50 would be a big help down through there. We have, we have kids, and we have a lot of people, a lot of seniors, and them. We're in the middle of a subdivision up there. There's a subdivision on on the you know left hand way. So there's a lot of people walking. And uh, that's one thing we can see we get traffic cut down, that's for sure. Yeah. Can, can you give me an example maybe of a call or a situation where um, you know the, the, the current conditions on the road came into play and it, it may have caused uh, an accident or a near accident, uh, you know. Well, near, near accident, I can tell you, if you, like, you know, uh, I got a bad scare one night. We, I was out on the side of the road, we were back in the truck across the road. Uh, car came over the hill, he got, he got stopped, and uh, and then he, he couldn't wait till we got out of the road. He just went around the front, right through the dooryard, and around the front and away, you know, in a big hurry. So, you know, there, we, we run into that.
that, the people's, you know, hurrying and, and uh, so it makes it, that makes it hard, like, it, especially at five, around five o'clock, we seem to have a lot of people going home to work, I suppose, and Saturday and Sundays, when we have a lot of traffic, you know, uh, out of town traffic going up, so that's, that's when we, uh, we seem to get the, the bulk of Sundays, Saturdays, is the worst and supper after supper or you know five o'clock yeah. and first thing in the morning yeah. Yeah. now yeah. i know uh in, in talking with gus he said he's basically been uh concerned about this particular situation really ever since he moved in nine years ago how long has it been a concern for you well really after they built after they built this new road in the interchange the interchange is when we had our trouble really before that we didn't get no and, and while they was building this, they had a temporary road going across there. We didn't have any traffic, you know, no, no amount of traffic up over the hill. So the problem is really down here to get solved, I think. But, I mean, a little slower up, up in the hill would be a help, that's for sure. But to fix it is right here. I wanted to describe for me, and you can turn your body to sort of point out what we're seeing here. I want you to describe your words, what's happening with the traffic, like they're coming up at Gregor Brook and turning left here and going down this residential road, yeah. instead of turning right and then the right and then the right again to, to go on the highway. Can yeah. you describe all that for me? Okay, well to get out on, to get onto Route 10, you'd have to, you'd have to turn a right, go over to the next, to the next right on the other side of the graveyard, turn right again, and then go down and turn right onto Route 10. So you got to go you got to go over and over and around. So you're, you're basically, they're going around the grave. The graveyard was the problem. See, the, the road uh, should have come up here and just made a UE on the Route 10, but they couldn't do it in kind of the graveyard. So they made it this way, which works. And and a lot of people do use it, too. They should, you know, there's a lot of traffic that's out of Sussex, you know, but we still get a lot up here, you know. So anyway. But how she all works. And the, the big issue is that instead of making those three rights, they're making the left, right? Making the left and coming up over the hill, which really don't gain next to no time. You know, because uh, you can drive up over the hill, and if somebody goes around, you'll see them by the end of the road. Like, the seconds difference, you know. Like, because once you get over on the road there, you got a good road to go on, you know, a lot smoother than this one. Speed limit and a faster speed limit. Yeah. Yes. You can, yeah, you get out on the on Route 10, the way you go. You know. So you so. Had, you had mentioned to me, and I think Gus may have mentioned it as well. Uh, GPSs are are part of the problem here because they're trying to direct people to the shortest route. And as you said, even though it might only be a couple of hundred feet, uh, you know, technically maybe it is a little bit shorter, even if it's not, you know, not really feasible. No, that's right. No, for sure. GPS, like I've even helped guys out with, uh, you know, being lost, and uh, all they had to do was go across the road and be on Route 10, but the GPS sends them over to the Roachville Road, and then up over the hill. So, yeah, it's just a little bit shorter, so that's how it, that's how it sends uh, the traffic. And I've seen ambulances go up, I've even seen cop cars go up, you know, wide open, like the siren's on just to give it her. Somebody that didn't know, I suppose, not used to the roads in the country yet, you know. And uh, I've seen that happen. And you hear them coming, the way they go down, down through the, down through, up on the hill, it's wide open. So that's what we've been running into. So how concerned are you that, uh, you know, that it's only a matter of time before a major accident where someone gets seriously injured or killed along here uh, well, is going to happen? Well, I'm... I've been concerned for, for a long time. And we really, like up on top of the hill, we've been lucky. Because I've seen a lot of close calls and, and uh, you know, with, every, with everybody out walking and stuff like that, and the kids. And so, yeah, it, you know, it, it's a, definitely a concern of ours, you know. I think of everybody up there, really, you know. So we'd sure like to see something happened. Now, yeah. Gus has had his communications or attempted communications with different 
levels of government, different uh, departments and things like that. Have you tried to, to reach out to the government to see if they would oh, answer your concern? I worked with Bruce on, well, they, they were, both ends of this road have been changed and, and, uh, and Bruce has been working on it for a long time. He knows exactly what, uh, what it all is and, and he's still working at it. You know, he's worked hard at it. So we have, he has made a lot of changes, we just need a little more. How yeah. long ago you had mentioned that, that the configuration of this intersection changed a little bit with the stop sign moving, uh, you know, moving closer to, to the crossroad. Um, how long ago did that change take place? Oh, I would say probably, what, five or six years ago anyway. Oh, God, yes. I think that probably Maybe handier than 10, yeah. and, you know, probably up to 10 years. So, uh, yeah. so, but, uh, you know, really it's, it's mostly been since that change that you've had this traffic issue? Well, no, really, we had the, we had the traffic before. We've had the traffic ever since they changed the, ever since it's been changed here. We've had the traffic problem. Yeah. When did it change down here? Well, when they built the, when they, when they rebuilt the interchange. Oh, get that overpass yeah. there going on yeah. the ten. When you, when they built this, all this set up here for, and, and over top there by the graveyard and all that, the overhead. And, when they built four lane, right? Yeah. How, early two thousand. How long ago was that? When was that? That was early two thousand. Early two thousand. Early two thousand. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I've got Gus's opinion on what he feels that uh, you know should be done in order to uh, control traffic better and things like that. What would you like to see if, if you were able to make the decision on on what the changes would be? What would you like to see? Well, I I, I would think for for uh, for a start, definitely a start. Uh, I'd like to see the speed limit go down up, up on the top of the hill, and uh, and I'd like to see um, I'd like to see a can or you know a mileage thing that says how fast how fast you're traveling by that right at the top of the hill, so they can see how fast they're going, and uh, and speed bumps would definitely definitely work. Probably. They're a little little rough on stuff, you know, on cars. So that would kind of be the third thing for me, but really the cure is right here to get the traffic out on the out on Route 10. Because when we had the temporary road over here, we had we had no problem. We was we was all set. Yeah. Um, how frustrating has it been? Uh, you know, as as I said earlier, Gus has been dealing with this for nine years through a couple of different governments. You've been dealing with it conceivably longer than that. So how frustrating is it to, to not be able to have an answer to uh, uh, or a solution here when, when this has been a problem for so long? Oh, well, I'd like to see a solution. It, it has been a problem, that's for sure. It's been there, and, and we've been working working at it, but I'd sure like to see them do something. And I'd like to see them do something right here, because this, this end is a cure. That's what you're doing. But temporary, get it slowed down, and maybe try the speed thing. If that don't work, put, put a speed bump up out for now, but this is the cure down here. Yeah. I guarantee you, if you do a survey here, and the cars have gone up through there, I've been noticing 50% of them people don't even live on this road. They yeah. get the shortcut. You know, you know, well, they, they assume it's a shortcut. Yeah. It, it, you know, if it's you come right there, you would think you'd just slip up yeah. to the road, not right. really quick. Uh, when, you say, when you say this end is the cure, what do you mean? I mean, make us a loop to go out onto Route 10, when you come out of Sussex right there. My, my, I think, they, I don't see why they couldn't do it, and, uh... See, this is government property here. They already own this piece of property. And that road, see the old piece of property here in that road? Yeah. Well, that was the ramp to go to number 10. That was the temporary. That was the temporary. And okay. they cut it off, but yeah. it was merged right out into number 10. Yes. There were when we had the temporary, it worked. It, yeah. it worked for us. Hmm. Yeah. So anyway, that's what I'd like to see. All right. See how we make it. <laughs> See how we make out.